All right, everybody. It's time for John Hartchick Movie Reviews. We get your latest news reviews and previews of DVDs and movies and TV shows on DVD. So, let's get started. Uh, this is going to be a pretty good episode. Let's go. First up, we have Tom Hanks in the movie Big. Uh, Tom Hanks basically makes a wish in a little thing at a carnival. Puts a quarter in, makes a wish to be big. Next day he grows, he's, uh, he's pretty big. He wakes up in a bed, he's big. And I don't know, Tom Hanks, that's a pretty unbelievable thing. I, I've never heard of that happening in real life. But uh, that's what happens with Tom Hanks. Um, the booklets... They stole the picture, but that's all right. It's big. Um, it is pretty bad, but it's big. So, okay. What else? What else? Has several bonus features, including a 1.85 aspect ratio, and English, French, and Spanish subtitles. And lots of other stuff. Have you ever heard uh, the really big secret? The secret is big. Um, big has a scene in it with Tom Hanks running up and down a large piano. It's quite, quite humorous. It'll give you a little chuckle. And... Basically, Tom Hanks is pretty good in this movie, but it's not his best one. I'm going to give this one 3 out of 5 stars. Big on DVD. They stole the booklet. Alright, next up we have Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. This is a Kevin Smith film, and it's... You've, you've probably seen Jay and Silent Bob in their little movies, um, one smokes, one doesn't talk, it's quite, quite ridiculous, and this, this is not their best movie, uh, basically, there's a jewel thief, they, these girls try to steal this, these jewels, Will Ferrell makes an appearance, and they, they, They really don't do their best work. The Clerks was definitely um, one of their better projects. It's a ridiculous comedy that everybody can enjoy. It's rated R, and it's this is the NTSC version. So if you're if you're in Europe, it's, it's, you can't play this on your PAL TVs. Keep that in mind. This is the collector's edition. And, oh, it has Ben Affleck, Will Ferrell, Jason Lee. Ooh, Jason Lee, he's on, uh, my name's Earl. Chris Rock. Chris Rock doesn't die in this movie. He does not die. Uh, I thought that was an inter interesting choice on Kevin Smith's part. The DVD raw material includes an open mic commentary screenplay viewer, cast and crew photography, and web links. And I don't know if you can hear that light. That light sounds like it's about to explode. <laughs> Rewind that and check that out. I've been clicking. This Hollywood had it coming. That's their slogan. Now basically it is a good good movie, but I expected more Kevin Smith usually really uh, has some good dialogue, but not so much in this one. I'm giving this two and a half out of five. Jane's Silent Bob Strike Back or whatever. Next up we have From the Earth to the Moon on DVD. 
I, I haven't actually seen this, but this is a huge, enormous disc case thing. Uh, I probably should have done, done this at the beginning of the, of the show, but uh, right now I'm going to go ahead and apologize. This is not going to be our best show, everybody. Uh, I've been up for about 20 hours right now, and I'm a little messed up. <laughs> but uh, we're, gonna, we're, still, we're doing a show. So, this is from the Earth to the Moon, and looks like it's got four discs, and I heard this is just the story of the Apollo missions and the first journey to the, to the moon, but look how enormous they made this thing. That's a little bit like overdoing it. What what I think, what I think, is they put this huge thing inside this case, so when you see this on a, on a shelf at a store, you, you say to yourself, "Wow, that thing is gigantic," because at the store it's covered in like foil. It's covered in foil, so you don't actually know how many discs and stuff are inside, how much actual materials inside. So you see this huge thick thing, you could basically store 50 CDs inside of this, but they only have four, because they made it super thick just to confuse the audience, and they do have a nice like shiny aluminum foil outside, and I think it's directed or produced or something like that by Tom Hanks, and this is the last thing he produced, I believe. So it's probably not that good. Uh, I'm giving this two, two out of five stars. Just because I can't get this stupid thing back on. And because I made it too thick. Um, two out of five. So you might, you might, also, you might also notice we're going pretty fast here. Because we have a huge stack, and in the last episode we went, we went like 56 minutes. It's a little too much, so we're going a little faster than normal. Uh, the next up we have The Curse of the Jade Scorpion. This is the widescreen edition. Um, okay, that's great, the Jade Scorpion. First thing I see is you stole the disc cover for the cover. Good job stealing your own templates. They have a menu. Okay, good job, Jade Scorpion. You stole the you stole the booklet too. That's terrific. What one half of the booklet has the, the cover? That's, that's a minus right there. The other half has a guy who looks like Eugene Levy, but isn't. That's another minus. Okay, this is an hour and 52 minutes long. You lose another point there. It should have been an hour and 40. Okay, uh, oh, it's in color. Good job. You get a plus for that. This has Dolby Digital Surround Sound. That's pretty good, I guess. PG-13 is pretty good. Um, ooh, Woody Allen and Dan Aykroyd. That's... That's a good uh, match there. Helen Hunt, that's kind of a minus. It's a gem. It says Newsweek. Charming and witty. Okay, uh, I haven't actually seen this one. Uh, the Jane... The Curse of the Jade Scorpion. I haven't... I have not seen this one. But it looks... Pretty pretty bad. Sometimes Dan Aykroyd has his good ones. Sometimes he has his bad ones. But this looks like one of Dan Aykroyd's pieces of trash. So I'm giving this a one one and a half out of five. We're, we're slowly going down. I see some pattern there, but there isn't one. Next up we have Caddyshack Two. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like we're still going down. Caddyshack 2. The sequel to the popular movie Caddyshack, starring Bill Murray. 
But unfortunately, I don't think Bill Murray's in this movie. Uh, the Shack is back. Okay, this movie is rated PG. And basically, Chevy Chase's worst movie. Chevy Chase was pretty bad on SNL. And then he just went even farther down the tube with this one. This is really a piece of garbage. Caddyshack, Caddyshack would have gotten five, five out of five easily. Caddyshack is a masterpiece, but Caddyshack Two is a piece of poo. <laughs> they couldn't even afford the whole plastic cover and with a paper, the paper cover, and <laughs> for the, the the DVD cover, it does say Caddyshack on there. I know you can't see that. Cause it's just like super faded in there. They couldn't afford ink. They just like engraved it. That's because uh, they knew nobody was gonna buy Caddyshack too. So, all right, all right, all right. Caddyshack two, the piece of poo is getting one out of five stars. Don't check out that. Next up, we have the Blues Brothers. With Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi. The 25th anniversary edition. Uh, no booklet. No booklet inside. And it's two two-sided. You know, with a two-sided DVD. And uh, the widescreen edition. Alright. So it looks like John Belushi... His prison number, oh, it looks like his prison number is 01A4391, and Dan Aykroyd's number is 01A4392. What a coincidence. Looks like Dan Aykroyd is 7 feet, no, <laughs> Dan Aykroyd is 6 feet 1, one inch. And 220 pounds. John Belushi is 5 feet 8 inches and 225 pounds. That's interesting. It says it on the cover. It says it on the cover, folks. This movie's rated R. Um, I've got to tell you, if you haven't seen this movie, Blues Brothers, you've got to check it out. It's from Universal Pictures. This is this is a good movie. Um, a lot of a lot of comical scenes, a lot of singing, a lot of dancing, a lot of action, a lot of chase scenes, a lot of police cars getting smashed up, a lot of uh, people wearing tuxedos, a lot of John Candy, a lot of John Candy in this movie, and a lot of a lot of bonus features in, on the DVD. I'm going to go ahead and give this movie four out of five stars. Yes, four out of five. That's, that's pretty good. Four out of five. Make sure you check out that, that movie. It's terrific. Next up we have a PBS DVD video called Fighting for Freedom. It's a revolution and civil war movie. And this is the second PBS video we've done. Last one was Horatio's Drive. This one's Fighting for Freedom. And there's definitely some type of a theme here. This movie's not rated. That's a little warning to you uh, parents out there. Make sure your children don't watch this. It's, it's not rated. There might be some nudity in this. Might be some people getting shot in the face. Might be some some uh, cursing in this. And I hate to say this, but again, the DVD cover, the cover, of the case, and the booklets, all the same thing. Oh my God, you idiots! 
You stupid idiots. And you put ads on the back. You stupid idiots. PBS. That, oh my goodness. That's, if you haven't watched the previous episodes, that's how you get your lowest rating. By, by using the same picture for the booklet. Shouldn't be doing this. So, A Fight for Freedom. I haven't, I haven't seen this, but it, apparently it features a lot of voices. There's a lot of extra features. And has English, Dolby Digital Surround Sound. And, all right, the UPC number is 3 space 1812 space 03438 space 5337. That's a pretty good number. That's a pretty good number, PBS. And major funding by this was provided by General Electric. So this is basically a universal picture because General Electric owns Universal. But I don't know about that. General Electric has, uh, huh, they might be just doing that for some advertising. This is only, okay, okay, okay. This is 90 minutes long. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. So here, here's the rating. Here's the rating. I, I got it. I got it. You start with a three. You start with a three. Three out of five. But it's PBS, so we take it down to two out of five. They stole the booklet, so we take it. At, we take it down to uh, one out of five. They stole the DVD cover, so we take it down to zero out of five. But it is exactly ninety minutes long, so we give it one out of five. And. I know, I know there's something else good about this. It's in color. It's in color. That's pretty surprising for a PBS film. So we're going to give this 2 out of 5. Because it is, it is in color. I don't want to sound racist, but this is the most colorful film of all time. In my opinion. Alright. 2 out of 5 for Fighting for Freedom. Okay, next up we have... Cars. Uh, this is not the actual DVD cover. They they didn't send it to us, but all right, it is the actual DVD. Cars. It's from Disney and Pixar. Did we do this in another episode? I don't know, but we'll do it again, I guess. It's rated G for the general audience. It's 116 minutes long. Its stock number is 39069. Now, it stars Owen Wilson and Larry the Cable Guy as cars. <laughs> Basically, Pixar and Disney are running out of ideas. Uh, they have things in the water. They have monsters. They have toys. There's movies about things in Alaska, in the desert. And they, they finally ran out of movie ideas. So they went to Cars. I don't know. I, I thought the animation was pretty amazing. But the, just the idea... The whole plot was pretty unrealistic. Might as well make a, make a movie about pencils. Wait. Just put a face on this. You can do the exact same story. Basically, like... This guy is, this guy is a pen. He, he could be the main character. This guy is a pencil. He's a pencil. He could be... Uh, the old worn out dock, dock mobile. Yeah, uh, but like, um, what, you won the Stanley Cup? Yeah, I, I won the Stanley Cup. I don't believe it. Let's see you, let's see you write a letter. 
Oh, you didn't use ink for that. You didn't use, use ink. Look at this. I use ink. That's unbelievable. I use I use lead. It's not actually lead. It's it's graphite. Look, I can erase things. I can I can uh, use some whiteout, right? Just put some faces on these things. You got a movie. <laughs> Disney, if you steal that from me, I'm suing. Just letting you know. But uh, basically, my point is, Disney Pixar. <laughs> they're they're um, running out of ideas. You can make a movie about anything. It doesn't have to be cars. You can, you can use paper, couches, windows. Make a movie about windows. Call it Windows. Just put some eyes on the top. Make the opening and closing part the mouth. Have two windows talking to each other. Make it, make it a movie. I know you're going to do that, Pixar. But I, I just copyrighted that. That's my idea. I'm, I'm, after this episode, I'm going down to the uh, the courthouse. I'm going to copyright that idea. <laughs> you better not steal that. <laughs> Coming in the summer of 2008, Windows. Get ready for that. But uh, as for Cars, it's a piece of crap movie, except for the animation, which is pretty good. So I'm giving it 3.5 out of 4. Next up we have another movie... Without a, t without a cover. It's The Lady Killers. Starring Tom Hanks. Uh, basically another movie. That isn't Tom Hanks best. It's. 104 minutes long. It's rated R. And. I don't know what to say about it. Basically. They. I think they try to kill an old. Uh, African American lady. To get some money or something. A lot of stupid jokes. Tom Hanks does a bad job at his, at his uh, accent. And another movie that's not as good as Forrest Gump or Castaway. So, two out of five. Next up we have Cry the Beloved Country with Sidney Porter. And I'm not sure if I should do these together. It looks like the same movie. These are both called Pl Cry the Beloved Country. And this is our first VHS video film. Cry, Cry the Beloved Country. This is a Miramax film. I don't even know what, what this is. Like, as James Earl Jones... Richard Harris, Cry the Beloved Country. Why don't you just look this up on Google and do your own review? I have no idea what this is about. This might one of this might be a sequel. Cry the it's PG thirteen. I guess it came out in nineteen fifty one. I don't even know why that we hide this in tonight's episode. This is I haven't seen this. I don't know anything about this, but it's on VHS. Uh, James Earl Jones usually does some good work, but I don't know what to say about it. There's... Maybe this is a remake of this one. That's what it looks like. <laughs> they both have... Uh, a Negro, a Negro and a Cracker on the cover. And they both... Look similar, but they're clearly different actors. Um, a man of power and a man of peace brought together by a chilling event. I don't know what to say about these. Cry the Beloved Country on VHS. I don't know what to say. <laughs> so I'm just... Three out, three out of five? Two and a half out of five. Two and a half out of five for both of those. All right, next up we have Turner and Hooch, starring Tom Hanks. Oh my god! And I open it up, and what do I see to my surprise? The same exact cover. Stupid Tom Hanks. This is a movie about Tom Hanks, 
who's a cop, I think, and he has to take care of a dog who slobbers a lot. Okay, the movie has a simple cover. Nothing special about that. Um, uh, the oddest couple ever. It's rated PG, so if you're parents, you might want to make sure you check this out before you show your kids, because this requires some parental guidance. Um, yeah, so Tom Hanks has to take care of this dog. He ruins his house, and Tom Hanks gets angry at the dog. But then at the end of the movie, he falls in love, and the dog saves his life. This is this. I think this was made in the eighties, and back then, Touchstone Pictures was doing much better, and. I guess people in the past had lower standards because if this came out today <laughs> Tom Hanks would kill himself from the bad ratings and bad reviews but I, I don't know I, I said this before Tom Hanks does movies well when he's the only one he's, when he's like the only main character and he's sort of like this in this movie. You know, Castaway, Forrest Gump, The, the Terminal, um, whatever we did before this. It's Tom Hanks basically by himself. That's what it is like in this movie, except for the dog. And that's how Tom Hanks is the best. Big, he's also by himself a lot. Tom Hanks is really a loner. He, he doesn't like to work with other other people. And he, he continues that in this. But that dog is disgusting. So we're only giving this 2 out of 5. Turner and Hooch, 2 out of 5. Next up we have Tom Hanks again in A League of Their Own. Starring Gina Davis, Tom Hanks, and Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> this is uh ah oh, come on Tom Hanks why do you have to do this to us you stole the cover again <laughs> again Tom Hanks you stole the DVD cover and put it on the booklet so this movie is a Columbia picture not Columbia TriStar just Columbia it's about a team of lesbian baseball players who travel the country and play baseball and they're in a league of their own. Tom Hanks is the coach. There's one of them as a child and oh this is the deluxe widescreen presentation. Okay some of the chapters some of the chapters include Preview, Start, Columbia Moves, Moviescape News, A Good Scout, Catching the Train to Chicago, Marla, A Cowgirl Meets Don Mara, First Members, and Meet the Pitchers. That's just the beginning though. There are... 51 chapters in this movie. It's really a, a, a chick flick. I... I don't know. If you see it, you you know it's going to be a big movie. But I, I didn't like it. Um, a, lot of, a lot of corny jokes that could have been done better. And... Tom Hanks didn't even need to be in the movie. It would have been just as good without him. Basically, I, I was just talking about how he, he's better by himself. This movie, he's surrounded by... Uh, he's like... 10, 20, 20 women. And I don't think he did his best job. So I'm going to give this... 
point two out of five. Next up we have Toy Story 2 starring Tom Hanks and Tim Allen. This is another Disney Pixar movie. Uh, this is the sequel to the movie Toy Story starring Tom Hanks. Uh, a lot of Tom Hanks in these episodes. So the booklets is original. That's good. Covers original. That's good. Looks like there's a lot of special features. They have an advertisement for cars in this. Yeah, way to go, Disney, selling us out again. Uh, looks like a pretty good DVD guy. There's two discs, not one but two. Um, Dre G for general. It's THX mastered. Dolby Digital Surround Sound. Lots of bonus features. Um, the guy from Frasier, Kelsey Grammer, is in this. He's the voice of um, the old toy who's in the box and stays in the box the whole time until, you, until the ending where you find out he's a bad guy. Whoops, I just spoiled the movie for you. Kelsey Grammer's character is a bad guy. <laughs> okay, here's... <laughs> here's an impression of Kelsey Grammer's character. Okay, here's an impression. Hi, everybody! Okay, that's my impression for the episode. <laughs> um, <laughs> so there's a lot of famous people in this movie... Tim Allen, I, I personally believe this is Tim, Toy Story 1 and Toy Story 2, I believe are Tim Allen's best movies. Uh, you can't get any better. It was just the right character, and they did a good job casting that. They were about to make a Toy Story 3. They had the script done, and they were just about to start animating it. They, they were about to do storyboards. But somehow it got cancelled. I think they made Finding Nemo instead. So basically this is a good movie. Good movie. I'm giving it four out of five. Four out of five. Toy Story 2. Next up we have Tom Hanks in the Green Mile. <laughs> what is this? Like five Tom Hanks in a row? Alright, Tom Hanks in the Green Mile. It's rated R for Restricted. This is a movie about a large African-American man named Michael something who has magical healing powers and is sent to a prison run by Tom Hanks. And there's a rat that does stuff. And that's the whole story. I just gave it away. This is a Warner Brothers movie. And I, I just gave you the whole story. Um, it's pretty good. There's some people <laughs> dying by electricity in it, and they oh they have the, they have a paper cover, but they still stole the cover and put it on the DVD. Okay, um, I was going to give this three and a half out of five, but you stole the cover, so you're getting two and a half out of five. Tom Hanks. All right, look at this. We have Leonardo DiCaprio and Tom Hanks in Catch Me If You Can. This movie came out the exact same time that um, his other movie did where he's running away from the police. So basically he switched roles. I can't think of the movie, but there's another one where he's running away from the police. This one he's a policeman running to catch Leonardo DiCaprio. This is a pretty good movie. Their theme is arrows and people walking. Uh, it's rated PG-13. It's, it's got a 1.33 slash 1 aspect ratio. It's got English, Spanish, and French uh, languages. It's got Dolby Digital Surround Sound. And... Lots and lots of bonus features. It's 
supremely entertaining. It's like a pizza. It's it's supreme. And okay. Did they did they steal the booklet? Did they steal the booklet? I hope not. Oh, they stole the booklets. You dumb morons. You stole a booklet. Look at that, it's the exact same one. You idiots. Alright, it's a pretty good movie. The guy who did it is pretty good. It's like... It's, I don't think it's Spielberg, but it's somebody pretty good. Uh, I, I don't know. Leonardo DiCaprio. My guess is it's his last good movie. So... I was going to give this three and a half, but you stole the booklet again. Just like the Green Mile, you're getting two and a half. Two and a half for Catch Me If You Can. Next up we have Arnold Schwarzenegger in the sixth day. The sixth day. So, I, I know I've seen this, but I don't remember exactly what happens. I know <laughs> Schwarzenegger isn't some... He's an action guy. Alright, alright, alright. This is the one where he gets cloned. Tom Arnold's probably in this movie. So Arnold Schwarzenegger gets cloned. And... The clone gets free or something like that. And the only way to identify the real person is a dot in your eye. You look in a mirror. That's how you know you're real. So the sixth day, it's Columbia TriStar. It's 124 minutes long. You're losing a point there. It should have been 123 because it'd be one, two, three. But you made it 124, so you're losing one there. It's NTSC. Uh, the booklets. Uh, you kind of stole the cover, but not really. So I'll I'll, I'll let you go. Let you slide there. Uh, you got a lot of information about it. Um, I don't know what else to say. I think I think at the beginning of the movie, when he's driving his car, he uses a PlayStation controller, which brings up uh, something I have to say. Our sponsor for tonight's show is Sony. Uh, try out the Sony Ericsson cell phone. It's one of the best. Lots of texts and games and graphics on the Sony Ericsson. It's slim and hip and cool and neat. Sony Ericsson. My one mother. Our sponsor, so check that out. And that's the movie. This is the Columbia Tri-Star movie. And Tom Hanks. Th this guy, this guy is now the governor of California. That's it's great. It's a little unrealistic. You can't just scan somebody's eyes and record their whole life, their whole life's memory in a couple seconds. It's a little unrealistic. All right, all right, yeah, rating, rating. Um, two, two and a half out of five. Next up, we have Friends, the complete seventh season on DVD. That's a little unbelievable. The complete seventh season of Friends on one disc. I don't believe it. It was like 20, 20 episodes. Um, this cover, this cover is black and white for some reason. This is like the cheapest movie I've ever seen. It's the complete seventh season on one disc. There's no way that's, that's real. Uh, now with footage you've never seen. That's terrific. But the thing is, there's like 20, 20 episodes of Friends per season. That's not going to fit on one disc. Clearly you're lying to us. Tell us the truth next time, Friends. I like, I like NBC. They're pretty good. But you shouldn't lie to us. Be honest. Yeah, I know you've seen Friends. I don't need to explain. There's like nine or ten seasons. This is the seventh. Um, you looks like a piece of crap. I don't, I don't even want to hold this any longer. I'm giving that one and a half out of five. Okay, next up we have Joe versus the volcano. 
starring Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan. Oh my God. Meg Ryan again. She was in. What the, what the heck? Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan. They must have something going on. Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan were together in Sleepless in Seattle. And You've Got Mail. That's some interesting stuff. This movie's rated PG. That's pretty interesting. The Meg, Meg Ryan and Tom Hanks. They're hugging here. Clearly they're like falling in love. But... I haven't seen this, but I guess they're falling in love. But they were in You've Got Mail together, where they fell in love. Sleep in, Sleep in Seattle, they fell in love. I wonder if there's another one. Email us. Let us know. We'll, uh, we'll put the email address on the screen if we have one when this is released. But we probably won't. So, I don't know. Just email us somehow. So Meg Ryan's in this. Uh, Joe versus the volcano. I've never even heard of this until a minute ago. Uh, this is rated PG. Oh, come on. This movie is 102 minutes long. You lost the point right there. You should have made it 100 minutes. Make, make these movies nice, even numbers. Why do you have to confuse us like this? All right, let's make sure they didn't steal it. All right, you've got an ori original cover. That's good. Um, you got my interest with Meg Ryan and Tom Hanks. <laughs> I I, uh, I didn't realize they were in so many movies together. So, uh, two and a half out of five. I haven't seen it, but I'm giving it two and a half out of five. Next up, we have Will Ferrell. In Elf. This is a not one but two disc DVD. This movie was a little a little upsetting. The more the more the more movies Will Ferrell does, it seems like the worse they're getting. Bewitched, The Ladies Man, Superstar. Will Ferrell's movies Lately, they haven't been that, that uh, good. Zoolander. <laughs> you, uh, you're turning into Ben Stiller, Will Ferrell. You should really start reading those scripts. Basically, he's an elf. He's like a seven-foot-high elf. But elves aren't that high, Will Ferrell. You, you can't play an elf. What were you thinking? Oh um, I even how how can I skip this? The booklet's the same as the cover. Look at that, it's the same thing. It's identical. It's exactly the same. It's in an Infina film. I don't even know what that means. But it's it's Infina. Okay, Will Ferrell and Elf. Uh the movie was okay, but I don't know, it's a little unrealistic. You're getting two and a half out of five. Next up, Celtic Pride, starring Damon Wayans, Daniel Stern, and Dan Aykroyd. Um, I've seen part of this movie. I saw this movie on TV, and Dan Aykroyd... I think he pours gas on Damon Wayans. And that's all I remember. Ooh, is, is Daniel Stern the guy from Home Alone? Ch remind me to check that. Daniel Stern, is he in Home Alone? He might be. Daniel Stern. Is he the guy who does the voice of Dilbert? Daniel Stern. I don't know. It looks like he might be. Um, Celtic Pride. All I really know is Damon Lane, Damon Wayne's gets gas poured on him and then he tries to light a lighter or something like that. And I guess he's a basketball player. But even that part wasn't that good. So, 
Yeah, I don't know what to say. It's NTSC, Dolby Digital, and it's in widescreen. I'll, I'll give you two out of five. Two out of five. Celtic Pride or whatever. Next up, we have Kicking and Screaming, starring Will Ferrell. The widescreen edition. It also stars Robert Duvall. This is another another movie with you, Will Ferrell. You should have read the script. The DVD cover is a picture of, of a soccer ball. That's clever, but I know Will Ferrell didn't come up with that. Pictures, a, it's a picture of a soccer ball, and it's 2.25, no, no, 2.35 aspect ratio, anamorphic widescreen, and. This has lots of special features, including the red cards, the yellow cards, outtakes and deleted scenes, kicking it with the kids, and I saw this movie and I was a little disappointed again, Will Ferrell. The, <laughs> the thing with the coffee is not funny at all, but <coughs> the part where you have that, that the parents are running around the field. That's pretty funny. I was actually LOLing at that part. And this is more of a kids movie. Uh, it's rated PG. Uh, it's a hundred, hundred and what? 135? You should have cut that, that piece down to 130. Make it nice and even. Uh, there's some some coach on here, like Mike Dicka or something. I have no idea who he is, but I know he's a coach. I don't even, I don't know. He's, I think he's the neighbor. I, 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 and I, I don't care about that. That's, doesn't, that doesn't interest me. But the, the part where you had the guy running around the field, that was pretty funny. So, I'll give you two, 2.2 out of five. Now our last, but definitely, definitely not least, DVD we have is The Simpsons, the complete eighth season. I don't know if you've ever seen a show called The Simpsons. It's easily the best show, or best cartoon, or whatever, of all time. This is the eighth season. They really went all out on this. I'm being completely honest here. They have a nice cover. It's nice and shiny. Um, it's the right size. All, all their DVDs match. I have nothing bad to say about this. It's hilarious. Look inside. It's that just fell out. It's great. It just ruined the whole the whole piece. But you look inside. It's got uh, four discs. Nicely drawn characters. The whole the whole season. You only have a couple of little mistakes. Where did that thing go? I don't. I don't know. Wow! I just screwed this whole thing up. Wow! That's terrific. You've got this manual thing, Memories of the Simpsons, with the scene and episode selection guides and all that stuff. They have commentary on this, with Matt Groening, James L. Brooks. Um, I, crap. Sam Simon, He's, he doesn't do the commentary, but he's still on there. Um, Bill Oakley, Josh Weinstein, they all do stuff on this. The one guy even brings his kids on the commentary. They, uh, Dave Thomas does some commentary. I'm, I'm being completely honest with this. Dave Thomas does, Tom, does commentary. They have special guests doing commentary. They have cookies in the DVD. These things... And, not to mention, look how clean these are. My holy ghost, look how clean these are. This is the, this gets our clean award for the episode. The Simpsons really outdid themselves. I don't know, I just threw the cover, I don't know where it went. It's, just the whole floor is empty, I don't know where it went. That's great. Um... You have this menu, 
Matt Gruning does um, some some funny things in this. He they have a special guy who won an award and got to do commentary. They have the episode where um, Bart gets a new dog. The episode where they're in the ski lodge and they get trapped with Mr. Burns and Homer. Um, the, the episode with the gay guy who makes Homer think that Bart might be gay. They have the episode where the Halloween one with uh, with the, the little city that Lisa makes. And, the, you know, they have a lot of them. A lot of things like that. The one where Homer sees the wolf because he eats the Tabasco thing. You know what I'm talking about. You've seen them. It's season eight. People say it went downhill from uh, season like four and up. You're wrong. It's Simpsons has still got it. It's got it going on. So Simpsons season eight. Th this is possibly our best rating of all time. Prove me wrong. I might be wrong. Uh, but Simpsons season eight. You're get you're getting um, five five out of five. There's nothing wrong with that. Because, yeah, honestly, <laughs> check out the Simpsons, Simpsons Season 8 DVD. Wish I had the cover to show you, but I don't, because I just threw it, and it's gone. And this is the last one. We were saving this for last, because it's, it's, it's delicious. It's delicious. <laughs> Alright, that's it. Thanks for watching Episode 5. forgot to say that, too. Is it five John Hartchick movie reviews? Hartchick out.